Hey, okay, say hi, George. How are you? Hello, yep. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, all right. Thank you. <laughs> it's quite late now, so I'm looking forward to, like, having dinner and just settling down. <laughs> what have you been up to today? Um, yeah, so this morning um, I was in the lab um, with the other uh, SPP um, on um, and then, yeah, this, this afternoon I sort of did a little bit of admin, um, but it was also um, a scientific meeting, scientific team meeting. So that was good to sort of get to the knowledge um, and sort of be, be there on the agenda, really, and, and everyone else was busy, it, which was nice. Sounds really interesting. It's not something that I've been able to do yet, but hopefully, like, in the future we will again, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, so do you just want to give like a little bit of a background, if that's okay, on like what um, specialism you're on, and then your like experience before the FTP? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm first year andrology. Um, I about me. I I um I studied biology at, at uni uh, at Birmingham. Um, I did. Um, I'd, I'd learned a lot about. Uh, Function, but sort of a lot of heart and a lot of muscles, a lot of kidneys mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Not so much like reproductive science. Um, so when the lectures sort of came around to that, that was really kind of interesting. Um, but like I didn't really know what to do with it. And then, um, and then it sort of I'd always wanted to to like use use what I what I'd learned because because I always found it like so interesting. I thought oh, I can find a job like this. Um, and then yeah, I heard about the STP. Um, and yeah, so it went from there. So my, I ended up doing my fourth year project um, in andrology. Um, so sort of develop a new new way um, like sperm in, in, in IVF mm. process and um, the IVF treatment. Which was really, really interesting. It actually gave me a good background in like what a clinical scientist would do. Yeah. Um, field. Um, so that was really, really helpful. And then, yeah, so andrology itself, if, if people don't know, is like so fertility is it's split into andrology and embryology um so embryology very very simplistic way of putting it is embryology is, is basically anything to do with the eggs and the embryo mm -hmm. itself um, and andrology is basically anything sperm related mm -hmm. so we deal with so so far i've dealt with things like um so the diagnostic semen analysis so when men first present um as, as well for sort of analysis of the diagnosis um we we do that assessment um we also then go through sort of process the sperm in in, in the treatment so um it's not like we can use the raw sample in treatment we have to sort of do some processing with it and sort of um isolate the cells so we do that process um, we also deal with things like sperm donors mm -hmm. Um, uh, freezing sperm for say cancer patients or for people uh, uh, going through gender reassignment so we can use those at a future date um, and yeah so post post we do a little bit of post vasectomy analysis as well to check that the vasectomy's worked yeah I, th I think that's pretty much all the um general sort of android yeah what android is for yeah <laughs> do you do um like surgical sperm retrievals and things like that um so uh, yeah so, so the clinic itself does it we we are involved in the process but we're not sort of we, we don't do the whole process ourselves so um i haven't actually seen one at, at our clinic yet um because they are quite rare from mm -hmm. but I've, I've heard about them basically what happens is so, so the doctor um the operation on, on the actual patient so they go into the testes get the sperm or get get tissue from the testes and then that's passed through to us through through sample patch and in the lab and then we there and then we sit through and try and find the sperm within that tissue um, like a hatch yeah it's sort of it's, it's like um you know like a serving hatch where you have like the, yeah. you open the door and there's someone sort of through through to the side that's that's what it is like <laughs> For, for egg collections for sort of um for embryology the side of it but yeah so that i think i think that's that's what gets used um, <laughs> surgical sperm retrievals as well 
That's so funny. I would have never. I feel like in my head, you know how there are like those things in old fancy houses where they put the food in on the lower floor and then like wind it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> Oh, so was your degree an integrated master's then if you had that before yeah 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 so um yeah I, I, I didn't do a specific master's in in, in new France I think um project made up two-thirds of the year two-thirds of the year I think mm -hmm. um and then one or two taught modules there I mean they didn't have anything to do with the Greek virtual science it was just that I yeah we'd had those lectures earlier in sort of Early in my degree, I think first, second, third year, so they were really quite basic. I had like three lectures on that compared to sort of maybe five or six on the heart or the muscle or whatever. So I thought, yeah, that's really interesting. Can, is there a way that I can sort of go go take that any further? And mm -hmm. uh, actually ended up having to go to the medical school because um, the guy who, who gave the lectures in biology was retiring. Um, but it actually meant it was good for me because because it meant the guy who I ended up being supervised by is is a clinical lead at, at the hospital, so I ended up getting like really good um sort of experience of, of, of side as well. So yeah, I bet that gave you a way to talk about like come application and interview, but yeah. you've yeah, been yeah. able to do like clinical work. A lot of people have lab experience, but I think it's harder to get clinical experience. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I would agree, but I, I think, yeah, I, I got really, really lucky. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I, I guess it's sort of, if, if you sort of put yourself out there and show that you're interested in something, even if it doesn't necessarily um, happen so directly in, in the fact that you, you get the clinical experience, the fact that you almost put yourself out there, like, um, one of the things that was highlighted to me that I should that I should emphasize in my application was the fact that I went out my way to sort of ask for um, a project in, in that field. Mm -hmm. Have it or the fact I had to go to the medical school to get it. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, it, it was really, really lucky for me, but I think if, if anyone's interested in that sort of thing, I think you can, can like, um, sort of if you go out your way, then that's a good way of showing sort of how engaged and how interested you are. Yeah. Definitely. It shows that you're willing to kind of um, ask for like learning opportunities as well, which is really important on the SCP. Yeah, yeah. Especially as I think some people have to like organise their rotations themselves. I don't know, because for us, um, genetics is like a well-established um, specialism. So all of our rotations are kind of planned for us. But I think like Nicole, um, my friend was saying that she is having to organise her histopathology placement, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What yeah, do you mean? Yeah, I, I, I'd agree. So it's a similar sort of process where you have to go out on your own and, and like make your own opportunities almost. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I, again, I think I think we're quite lucky with you in the fact that we're quite used to having certainly embryology trainees. Um, so the the rotations I think are organised for us as well, although we're having problems this year because of COVID. Yeah. Um, might have to be rearranged and potentially done online. But um but yeah, so it's I I, I think yeah, if you have that skill of sort of going and sort of going out your way and, and organising it uh, by yourself then then yeah that definitely helps with the rotations if, if if needed. Yeah, definitely. So to <laughs> Andrology and embryology departments always come hand in hand then or can they be at like separate sites? I I, I don't know for sure. I can only speak from the experience I've had. Um, but I imagine um, clinical andrology would only be present in a place where there's a clinical embryologist. So yeah. because, because the things like where we go through the, the the sperm processing for treatment, we then couldn't do um, the rest of, we couldn't then follow through on the rest of the treatment process that have to be mm -hmm. done by an embryologist. So it's, I suppose we complement each other in a way that we sort of, um, I, I imagine in coming years it will sort of um, separate a little bit to an andrology embryology, but um, 
need each other to sort of to then have the overall process correctly, I guess. Yeah. Like you've got an embryology hatch on one side and the andrology yeah, hatch yeah. on the other. <laughs> they all come together. Yeah. <laughs> Having said that, we, we do actually have um, a, a semen production um, sample hatch as well, the, the, the opposite <laughs> end of the room. It's it's not quite the same because because we don't we don't look through that one but um <laughs> um but but yeah it's it's definitely there. You leave them to get up to what they need yeah, to yeah. get up to on their own. <laughs> it must be a really rewarding um field. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm because I'm, I mean fertility is not it's not essential in the fact you're not going to die if 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 the treatment doesn't happen like potentially a lot of other healthcare specialisms. Um, but I think if anything, that makes people more appreciative mm -hmm. um, because it's not anything they've ever taken for granted. If, if they hear the sort of the fact that they're, they're potentially infertile or certainly subfertile, I think you know, through, it's really quite emotional because mm -hmm. for family, it's, it's, it's sort of, what a lot of people almost dream of having from such a young age it's like the ideal that that everyone has a family and if, yes. and if you can't have that then it's quite a big thing um so yeah so and, and especially as well because the treatment process it can actually take quite a long time so when patients come through for the initial um diagnose like it's that can take a few months for the results to go back to them then they can probably be a few months um for any sort of further investigation to be undertaken and then a few months for them to actually come through for treatment and then nine months they actually get any live births or uh, like that so again sort of the fact it's such a long process um makes people more appreciate it more because by the end yeah. of it it's it's such a amazing sort of thing to have to, to have happened to them really mm -hmm. So, we, uh, as, as, it, as luck turns out, we got forwarded one email today um, from one pa one patient, and she she'd written got sort of probably two sides of A4. Um, I'd say that sort of just like saying thank you to to everyone that's sort of been involved in the mm -hmm. treatment. Sort of just to hear that from someone. It's, it's not every patient, but certainly even just sort of one once, however, in a blue moon, it mm -hmm. sort of makes you realise like you're doing actually does have such a huge impact on on, on people so mm -hmm. yeah I, I would i would say that it's very rewarding because um i guess it's not like life and death like you were saying but it would have a really significant impact on a lot of people's like quality of life i guess and yeah. how happy they're feeling so even the word family like when you think of family you think of like children um, even though that doesn't have to be the case. So, I'd never even thought of the um, gender reassignment, like pe those going through gender reassignment. Um, I'd not even thought of that. So yeah, it's super interesting. It's, I suppose with the awareness and and and, uh, and and everything sort of surrounding transgender people, it's it's certainly becoming a bigger thing. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's certainly not routine. It's it's not something I'm doing every day. Um, it's not it's not something that comes through every day, but. It's yeah, it's it's a treatment that that that's offered, um, and a lot of people to take advantage of, and I think I I guess it's it's really quite important for them because that's their only real opportunity to have biological children. Um, if they don't have that, then it's really only adoption that, that the options are, which um or or no children. So um yeah, I I think it's quite valuable, really. Definitely. So you said earlier that there was one other trainee um with you is she like in the same year and everything are you doing the same training at the same points or have you been split yeah so we've got one embryology trainee who's in my year um so we're basically going through a very very similar process so she's done one of her rotations which i'm due to, due to do later because we all alternated so we did went off both off at the same time um and then but yeah so so I got trained on diagnostic semen analysis last semester. Um, well, last semester before Christmas, I'm still, <laughs> still in the uni. Still in the uni way. So, yeah, so, so I got trained on that before Christmas, and now she's getting trained on that. So, I'm sort of a little bit helping with that, but also 
like being at the scientific meeting today sort of there's so much um, there that like that both of us don't really know much about and sort of it's it's really and it's it's nice to have someone who's sort of at that level very early yeah. stage of, of their sort of career I guess um, mm -hmm. same way as I am two um, SCPs from the year above as well so one embryology mm -hmm. one embryology which is really really helpful so that I've so them cool. about how they've, how they've found, found it so far and, and sort of how they've found the progression and sort of mm -hmm. way that sort of doing conference leave looking at them and sort of conversations and stuff like that so yeah I, th I think we're, we're quite lucky there as well yeah you can really like learn from not necessarily like other people's mistakes but just what they found difficult and then like maybe things that didn't quite go to plan I feel like that's such a useful um opportunity to have when there's people in the older years well, I, th I think as well because they've obviously been through the same process themselves so any tips that almost you can pick up off them yeah. and it doesn't necessarily have to be someone that's in the same clinic as you but I think I've, I've I've known one or two people known of one or two people from from when I was doing my, my class last year that that were doing the SDP clinic I was doing the research at um and they uh and sort of just picking up a few tips off them as well so even though it wasn't necessarily directly helpful to me at the time sort of just learning little bits from lots of different people I think I think that 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 definitely helps yeah and they throw you in um to just the learning and it is great that they give you so much information and stuff like that but I think in our introductory webinars one of the people is like act like a sponge and just take it all up and I try to I really try <laughs> and then at the end of the week I feel like someone rings out that sponge <laughs> but um yeah. it's still good because like there will still be some things that have stuck in your head and it'll just carry on like adding yeah. so it's just yeah, important yeah. to remember not that if you don't forget if you don't remember everything week after week it's not the end of the world <laughs> yeah 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 well, I mean there's things I've probably been told a certain number uh, sort of sort of a few times that like come come in a week's time I I, I would have forgotten but hopefully <laughs> by the end of but I, I, yeah I think it's important to remember that we're only trainees and mm -hmm. sort of especially first year trainees as well so hopefully three years time yeah. dealing with that sort of on a weekly basis well so we we actually do know it if that makes yeah, sense definitely um so what are the other rotations you'll be doing then i'm guessing you've done like an embryology one if you're doing sperm analysis no no so <laughs> so and andrology because andrology is so new it's, oh, yeah, it's slightly um slightly imperfect is the right word to use mm -hmm. it's not it, it's not been um fully uh sort of the best way the best path hasn't been sort of found yeah. yet um so we are going to do genetics, histology, and cytopathology. Um, so those which, and th and then actually, funny enough, we do a road, we do the our fourth rotation is in andrology, which mm -hmm. yeah, so that's probably where the imperfect side of it comes in. So so effectively, I've done my andrology rotation, which I'll then go back and then almost relearn. But <laughs> I, think, I think that there's a curriculum review going on right now. Mm -hmm. I believe that's changing. So we are instead of the andrology one, we're going to do, or andrologists would do an embryology one. Mm -hmm. Sort of, I think would make a bit more sense. Yeah. Just see I mean, those. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it, I, from it, it seems as though they they might have just copied it, and um, copied the embryology one slightly in terms of sort of the rotations. Um, but but yeah. So I, I think yeah, that that's something else to to sort of. I, I guess thing to think about is that andrology is so new that it's it's not fully it's not perfect yet. Yeah. But I think I think as more people go through, so hopefully three years time when I'm finished, then hopefully there'll be a lot more information from the trainees that are on it. So hopefully the path will be clearer yeah. and, and hopefully make it a little bit more sense. Uh, but yeah, so genetic rotation is planned April. April. That mm -hmm. that's the one that. Evie, so the embryology um, uh, trainee, that's the one she's done, and then the one I'm doing later. And then the other two, it sounds like we can't go to them because we have to go to the hospitals. 
do then, but because of COVID, I think we're going to have to sort of not go at all and, and, and just do them online, um, which is, uh, yeah, a bit of a shame, but, mm -hmm. uh, um, but it, it's the, the times we're in at the moment, isn't it? For that for science pathology and histopathology as well, like it would have been so useful to be able to see the tissues, but I guess like obviously everyone's working in strange times now. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I I I think it, it it would obviously it is obviously better to do it in person. Um, but 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 yeah, it, it, I, yeah, as you say, it's just the way it is at the moment. Um, <laughs> I, I missed my graduation because of, because of COVID. It's just one of the things you sort of, mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. Like there's not, there's not much we can do. Um, yeah. Hopefully yeah. in the next few years, then, then, then the rotation can start back up again. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, so your uni modules will reflect your rotations then. Like, have you had all of your uni teaching? Before? Yes. So we had it. Uh, six weeks block at the start, six week block at the start, um, two weeks of the introduction module, introduction to healthcare science. We had one week of reproductive science, genetics, and then we had like a, two weeks of sort of joint cytopathology and histopathology. Um, so, so yeah, that was that that was really quite interesting, and, and obviously sets sets us up for the um, for the rotation for the job. How about you? Because have other people had like different uni ties? So I think we were similar to you. Was yours in Manchester? Uh, yeah, Manchester Met. Yeah, so ours was uni of, but I think they are they all fall under the same like kind of umbrella. So I guess they might do things like similarly. Okay. So we had all of our teaching in October, but we did the introduction to healthcare science one and like professional practice. Reproductive science, which was so much information, but yeah. it was really interesting. Yeah. Um, there was a, there was a lot of like the history. Um, yeah. Like 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 so interesting, but you came out of came away thinking, I I, did, I don't know if yeah. I need to write the exam. No, literally, and half of these words like these Irish gods that are doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got no idea, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Um. Then we had genetics like a week of genetics oh no it wasn't a week it was like three days and bioinformatics and then in december we had three days of genetic counseling but i've spoken to another trainee who is doing his um masters at king's and they've just had like all the uni teaching now like before so they had it from september to like december all of it yeah, so what, really like, different. It sort of for, for the three years. Oh no, not for the three years, but all of it for this year, I think. Um, that was like a lot of it. And I wouldn't feel oh, like I'd sorry. actually started work. Sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't feel like I'd actually started work. No, I'd just no, feel no. like I was full up uni. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, it's just mad. Now I feel like I really do need to ask people like what what their uni is like so I just thought we'd all be the same but apparently I mean, not. I, well, I, I assumed everyone would be sort of um the, the, like the six week block but then yes. I've seen a few people is it potentially on Instagram thing they said oh that we've got they've got uni teaching week coming up or something I'm like what? <laughs> do we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think we've got three days in March where we do like some more professional practice stuff on like leadership and communication but other than that I don't think we have any more, apart from like exams and assignments and things. Have you had many assessments yet? No, um, so we, well, I, we, we've had one exam in the Introduction to Healthcare Science mm -hmm. class. And she, is, is that the same one you did? So, yeah. okay. so we've not done one yet, but we have it in March. Okay, we right, okay, yeah, so, 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 so we've, yeah, we had that at the beginning-ish of December. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have like a reflective, um, reflective piece of work that, that we like. So we, we we reflect on sort of an event that's happened in um, clinic, we sort of say how we or we want to reflect on it and how we how it made us feel and sort of why did it happen and, and like can we uh, improve it, improve that sort of situation if it happened again. Um, so yeah, I th I th we've, we've had, 
we got that, and I think it's due in about two weeks. I think I've just got got the first draft, so I need now need to work mm-hmm. on it. But yeah, so that's that's all we've had so far. So it's been, uh, but then three exams in the summer, which I imagine might get to be busy. Yeah, that does sound stressful. Do you, yeah. Any in the summer, or have you you already had sort of a few things. So we've not we had a bioinformatics assignment due in at the end of November. So we had like a group one due in at the end of the week of teaching. So that was good because I'm not good at bioinformatics. So it was nice to kind of do it with the group. And then we had like an individual assignment due in later on. So the group work actually really helped just like prepare you for what you were gonna to have to do for November. And then we've got our genetics exam next week, but it's open book and it's a week long. So, okay. what sort of questions are, are they? Uh, apparently, well, when we first started, they said it was going to be like a mixture of multiple choice questions and short answer questions. And then in the like exam information bit, it just says short answer questions. So I really have no idea. <laughs> but. I am not too worried about it because it's a week long open book exam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we shall see. And then, yeah, the reproductive science exam in summer and the introduction to healthcare science one in March, and then a professional practice assignment in April, May, I think. <laughs> we got told today, and it's you see, this is my sponge brain, it's really? gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's finished. Um, so, what was I going to say? Your histology and cytology placements, were they, have they moved online because they were going to be at a different hospital? Yeah, so, well, well um, so, so we're at Shrewsbury, um, mm-hmm. the cytology, let me go, histology is due to be at the actual Shrewsbury hospital, but because we're off site, it's actually sort of a different site, so it's not like, um, although although it's in part of the same NHS trust, different sites. I don't think they want us going sort of going in and mixing too much. <laughs> so that one, yes. So that's why that one can't go ahead. And then the cytology is we're supposed to be at Wolverhampton. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, yeah, totally different um, trust. And yeah, so they they don't again. I, I don't think they sort of. They're allowing too much movement um, of, of the. So, yeah. Mm. Fair enough. Maybe like next year, if things have calmed down, you could just go for like a couple of days and see. Yeah. Like a whistle stop tour. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I think we've got a meeting about it tomorrow, so so we'll see. Yeah. Because the two in the second year, they they I think they've done their his, uh, histology, but not cytology. So they're obviously in second year, so they're even. Sort of even more advanced yeah. than us, which I think they, but yeah, so I think it may be slightly more important to them, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, hopefully we can get something soon. Yeah, definitely. So I don't know if it's the same for you, but we do like these journal, I say we, I sit there and listen because we don't have to do it until second year, but there are these like journal club things that happen. Is it like the same for you or? No, 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 no. That, that's, no. that's a totally new concept to me. Um, I, <laughs> When I when I was doing my research project in, in the masters, we did like weekly journal club type things there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've I've sort of maybe heard of, yeah. uh, heard of what it might be and, and maybe present some, but certainly not at our clinic. No, so we yeah I can't think of anything we do like that really. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd say the scientific meeting is probably the the closest we'd get to that. So I think it's roughly every two weeks. Mm-hmm. Basically, any issues that have arisen. Um, uh, uh, sort of throughout throughout that that time period, um, get added to the agenda, and then we discuss it sort of as a group. So, mm-hmm. like I added one for the first time today, and it was it was like what what um, what liquid we're using to um to to fix uh, the cover slip onto the onto the hemocytometer, which is like the counting yeah. uh, chamber. Um, they before COVID, they used to like breathe on it. Um, which. Because they get washed between each yeah. one, it's, it's fine. But then now, obviously, we've got masks on, so we yeah. can, like, nothing gets through. Um, <laughs> so, so they can't breathe on it. But then, we, if we're using water, 
um, like it, there's quite a specific dilution uh, mm -hmm. factor that, that um, that's already been made. So when we actually load the um, load the chamber, so we've got to be careful that it doesn't sort of um, mm. mix up, sort of I guess mix up the the, the dilution factor. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so so that's the sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's, some 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 of it's a little bit more interesting than that. Um, <laughs> no, I honestly wouldn't have thought. I don't know. I think just because we've been in this pandemic for so long, the thought of someone breathing on something else makes me like recoil. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Even, like it's it's totally weird what it's done. Like even just standing close to people, I don't, um, I don't. It doesn't feel right anymore. And, and people seeing people with masks on. So so the people at the clinic, I a lot of them I haven't seen with a mask off. Mm. I'm, I've only known them from the eyes. And then sort of when I go into the lunchroom, they've got the masks off. They're eating. They look mm -hmm. totally different. <laughs> Sort of what I'd expected, um, yeah. but they probably think the same about me as well. But um, <laughs> um, but but yeah, no, it's it's it's. It, I guess it's a weird time. Um, mm. We should get masks printed that like look like the bottom half of our face. <laughs> yes, yes. Although I've seen that, and like obviously, like the mouth gets distorted, so it oh, looks yeah. even stranger. Because I always have like I my eyes wander in the office quite a lot. If I'm thinking of something like my eyes will just go around the room, and there's been so many times where I've like come back into concentrating and I'm staring at someone across the office, and I'm like, I'm smiling underneath the mask. I'm not just staring at you. Yeah. So how patient facing is your role then? Because it sounds like you're kind of in the lab, but there's also the clinic. Yeah. So the, there's 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 a little bit of it, it, it's like a mix, I guess. Um. So at the moment, at the moment, I'm, there's a little bit of patient facing stuff. So, mm -hmm. so for the diagnostics, um, we ask them, we've got a questionnaire that we ask them, sort of ask about their clinical history, like do they smoke, do they drink alcohol, do they take any drugs? Um, so I guess that's sort of patient facing. Um, with, that used to be done like properly sort of one to one in a consultation room. But obviously that's being cut down now because of COVID. So mm -hmm. it's on the phone. Um, um, trying to think so the, the embryologists tend to have a few more chats about sort of the patients when they're going through treatments um again because andrology is so new it's it's not been fully defined i don't think mm -hmm. in terms of the level that we would contact we might have at treatment um but i think i think some of our competencies do include like explaining to the patient why um one method of insemination might be used over another mm -hmm. so i guess there is some expectation that we're able to talk to patients about that sort of thing yeah um i think again so so sperm donors i i, I think we can be quite uh patient facing in, in that sense so we need to explain um screening processes in terms of um stis or genetic screening mm. um so we'd have to gain informed consent as well consent oh yeah so consent is probably the biggest patient facing thing i can think of that we that we do um so things like sperm storage, I think we always have to, any, anyone that's stored, we have to sort of gain consent mm -hmm. from them. Right, for sort of how long we keep it for and what conditions it, it gets used on. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, it, it, it's, it's main, it's, it's in the vast, vast majority, it's lab based, but sort of there are nice little um, patient interacting roles as well. And I think, mm -hmm. So the consultant probably has more uh, mm -hmm. patient facing role. They they actually I, I believe that they talk to sort of patients about the results, um, a little bit. Um, we I don't think we do that. Certainly not as trainees. Um, potentially when we've registered. Um, but but yeah, sort of certainly the consultant has has slightly more patient facing stuff. Mm. That sounds interesting. I feel like consent and. Re in the reproductive science module all the bits about consent at the end blew my mind like the legal parent is yeah. the one that they're still married to not their new partner I was like ah. yeah <laughs> it, the sea. It, can, it can get um quite quite confusing and that's why the consent is so important yeah um so like if we don't get consent for it or if we only get consent to use it with one person and then they split up and then they, they want to use it but with a different person then that's not if it's not been sort of defining the consent then we can't do it so it's mm -hmm. it, it is a really really important process um and yeah sort of one i think i imagine i'd start 
um, probably towards the end of the second year, maybe third year. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's something that would be quite interesting to actually learn about when when I actually do get do get onto that. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. If you had like two tips to give yourself, like one for when you were applying and one for when you were starting out, if you could give them like to you back then, what would they be? Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, when I was applying, I'd probably say, um, show that, that, that you're interested, like, um, it's, it's so easy for someone to say, oh, I'm really interested in, in, in mm -hmm. this. Um, but like, if, if you go the extra step to show that you're interested in it, um, I think, I think that's really, really valuable. Um, yeah, ultimately, like. It is a really, really good thing to do, and and like if you include it in your application, I imagine that would really, really help. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think that's probably the biggest piece I'd say for applying now. Um. I think it's generally like organisation, mm -hmm. like trying to keep on top of things. Um. Because my supervisor, um, my tra training officer, um. We we um we have like weekly meetings with him, and he suggested that we do like two competencies a week. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So <laughs> like, I was like, mm -hmm, and then it got into my head. I was like, yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it it makes sense because yeah. you think that the number that we've got to do is is quite mm -hmm. a lot. Um, but if you do two a week, it's a bit more manageable. By the time you get to second third year, you should have the vast majority done. Yeah. Um, but but that does mean that like there's a lot of time pressures at the moment, so mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of things going on where I'm trying to balance um, clinical work, admin work that I've been given to do, um, and yeah, sort of the, the uni work. So I think it's it, it it's it's a good thing to be organised and yes. know uh, know exactly what what to do when, and like being able to balance your time uh, really quite a good. Uh, so yeah. If you are banging out eight competencies a month, I am shocked and impressed. <laughs> I set myself four right, <laughs> and okay. feel proud when I do that. Like, I mean, you're a I, machine. The, the, well, the, we, it's it's not that I'm probably doing eight a month, but like because when I when I'm in the clinic, it potentially is maybe two a week. But mm. when you factor in things like annual leave, yeah. Uh, in fact, we're away at uni, so I won't be doing any. During those yeah, months. that's true. So that's time where either you can catch up or, yeah. or um, you can get ahead, maybe, or or even just if you're okay, then then just actually just relax. Um, yeah. Catch but, your uh, breath. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's, it's not. It, I mean, it's, it's it's not deadly strict or anything. It's more a case of if you if you can do that, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, but but yeah, it's, it's something that I'm trying to do. It's it, it's quite is it is tough um to say, but um. But, but yeah, and hopefully it will pay off. Mm -hmm. Well, there goes my nice quiet evening. I'm going to be like typing <laughs> up competencies. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. Don't, don't make me crazy. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> it's hard not to compare yourself to others, but I think it's important not to because everyone's training is slightly different. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's that's huge. Like, to be mm -hmm. honest, there's a lot of there's a lot of Instagram accounts for, for, for the SCP people. I haven't followed that. I've, I haven't followed that many mm -hmm. because I can see on, on the ones I do follow, they've done this and they've done that and they've done that and they've done that, and I haven't. And it's it's mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's so so easy to compare yourself. Um, yeah. But it's it. I, I think they said at the start, like don't compare yourself because mm -hmm. as you say it's totally different for each trainee. My because I'm doing two conferences a week it doesn't mean sort of you have to because you're probably getting on with other things um mm -hmm. and sort of so you've, you've done your assessments in in what is it bioinformatics yeah so, which i haven't had yes. to do yet. so when I'm <laughs> in, the, in the summer then then i'm going to be probably cutting down on not doing any mm -hmm. conferences and, and just doing exams so yeah I, 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 yeah it yeah is, i think everyone will get there in the end so do it the way that you feel most comfortable with doing it yeah. and i think if your training officer is telling you to do something that like maybe like this hasn't happened to me personally they've been really understanding but 
if you don't feel like you can achieve that, just explain and be like, I can't do that, but I can do this instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I hope you have a lovely evening and have a good day tomorrow and then a nice weekend. But every yes. day is kind of like, <laughs> yeah. can't do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, we, we, we've, we've got the football back on this weekend, so yeah, oh. I'll, I'll be paying big attention to that. Oh, that's good. Who do you support? Aston Villa. Um, oh. We've just had a, a COVID outbreak, actually, so we haven't had a few games. But we haven't had any games for a few weeks. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to us actually playing again. <laughs> yeah, that'll be nice. I know, like, football is the one thing that kind of is... I don't it's, know. It's the one constant. Week. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It, it, like, it's something that I look forward to every week. And, and, and again, it's, 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 it's something, like, you can just look forward to, and, like, in mm-hmm. those two hours or whatever, I just just relaxing yeah it's just sort of sleeping and, and going Calm. Back. but yeah like familiar faces now I like yes. it. <laughs> and it's nice it's carrying on at the moment as well um, yeah that's true <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> cool well have a nice time watching the football and yeah thank you for doing this that's all right no no worries all right bye-bye see you later